Okay, I'm wondering how to do this video without boring the absolute crap out of everybody, but I rave on all the time about electromagnetism and I want to get across how incredible EM is. So electromagnetic waves are everything to me. <laughs> no. EM waves are, are a lot, mean a lot to basically how am I going to start this to keep this cool and I, okay if you were to believe something but you couldn't ever see it how do you know it really exists um however with EM waves we can program them to absolute specificity for example your phone whatever you're watching this on right now is receiving many many bits of information most likely invisibly either over wi-fi or the gsm network so how incredible that all these waves all around you right now, everywhere, and they can be programmed perfectly. These waves, to give, to give some insight, electromagnetic waves, they are partly electrical, partly mechanical, sorry, partly magnetic. And they, they travel at the speed of light and, and the E and the M, or the B in maths, the E and the B, they are 90 degrees perpendicular to each other. And you don't really get one without the other. They're correlated, obviously. And there's lots of very cool equations to work them out very, very accurately, such as Maxwell equations, which actually started off from Faraday, finding out that he could send information invisibly. Faraday didn't use one mathematical equation to, to find out the basis of most of the physics of which we live by now. So I want to get across how incredible these EM waves are. They're all around us. Yet you can't see them unless they're on the visible light spectrum and they bounce off of something. That's when you can see them. So if, look around you now, or look at the camera or the, the desktop that you're looking at now. Everything that's hitting your eyes is, is an EM wave and it's on the visible light spectrum. Now, that EM spectrum is very, very, very wide. At the very far end, where you've got these very high energy, hopefully I can get a picture up now, we've got these very high energy uh, rays, that's gamma rays, and at the very, very other side, you've got radio waves. Now, radio waves are really long. The, wa the wavelength is really long. At the other end, the wavelength is really short. But the key is, these radio waves are all exactly the same science. They're all electromagnetic radiation. So what does, what does that mean? What does EM radiation mean? They're giving off something, and they're giving off electromagnetic. Now, it's not really the scope of this video to go into complete detail about wave particle duality or the standard or, or type of physics, really, apart from maybe touching on some scientists see waves as streams of trillions of particles, of photons. And some people see an EM wave just as a disturbance in, in space um, with the amplitude, meaning at certain points, the disturbance is more, the disturbance is less. But you can measure them. So it's really the amplitude, the wavelength, and the energy of the, the photons that are different. So, okay, stay with me. Stay with me. I, I feel like I can know when I'm getting into a boring, I'm boring people because I want to keep you interested in this subject. So every single wave, whether it's uh, on this EM spectrum, is the same science. It's an electromagnetic wave, this E and the M or the E and the B. It travels, they all travel at the speed of light, unless they're traveling through water or something like something else. They can almost go on forever, almost, and they are the backbone of everything. So X-rays, EM waves, visible light, EM waves, radio, EM waves, gamma rays, you know. Now, they're just words that we give things. Really, because we're human, we, we're smart. We know what an X-ray, we know that IR, infrared, means below red. We know that UV, ultra, violet, means above violet. But really, they're just frequencies. They're just numbers. And they transition from one number to the other. And there's probably a ton of other things between and either side of these frequencies that we have yet to discover. They, OK, now to give you an example on, on, on visible light. OK, hopefully you're still with me. I want to segment each part by, by sort of starting again. Uh, OK, so the visible light spectrum, in my opinion, people say it's a tiny fragment of the whole EM spectrum, visible light. In my opinion, it's way smaller than what people think. If we can see four to 700 nanometers, those frequencies, the, time, the number of times they go up and down in seconds, are what we call red, green, and blue. Now, that's between four and 700 nanometers, very, very, very roughly. We can't see either side, infrared, ultraviolet, and whatever. 
Now, those frequencies of 300 nanometers of what we can see is very roughly three times 10 to the minus nine percent of the entire EM spectrum of what we know. So it's 0.0000003 percent of the entire EM spectrum is what humans can see. So you start thinking, there's a very reasonable question here to say, what does the rest of the EM spectrum look like if we could see it, if we can only see 0.803% of the EM spectrum? So I've done a bit of thinking around this and want to explain to you what it would look like and also just try and understand a little bit about how crazy this is. As I said, these waves are invisible. I can't see radio waves hitting my phone right now. But they're there and we can program them to perfection, whether it's receiving a 4K video, whether it's making a phone call, we can modulate these waves uh, with amplitude or, or frequency. We can modulate carrier waves and just throw data across these invisible things across the sky. OK, still with me? <laughs> I hope so. OK, the core thing to remember is that when you make a phone call or you send a wave somehow, an EM wave, it's not just magically going from your phone up to the cell tower. It's emanating in a sphere, four pi r squared. Emanating in a sphere, the wavefront is a, is a circle. So when you make a phone call, it's going behind you, in front of you. And when I see something, it's exactly the same. I can see things with the four millimeters of my retina, but just behind me, everything's, the, the light is there hitting the back of my head. So that's the next thing to understand, the, the, the spherical wave pattern, I guess, or wave front of an EM wave. So these electromagnetic waves all around us, let's, let's just talk about how we see things, how we see these waves. Because I, I'm looking at objects now, and I can see them, but I can't see the light between me and them. You know, if I was to shine a laser and put some fog there, I'd be able to see the light between them. So the way that it works with today's understanding is that light will hit, hit an object, let's say your phone or your screen that you're looking at right now, within the atoms, within that, your, the, 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 the thing that it's reflecting off that, those electrons orbiting those atoms will move energy shells based on the energy of the photon that's hitting them. Okay, got that? So photons are being absorbed. They're then reflected. So the way that you see something, you look at your screen and the electrons around the atoms, when they move, they're excited, they transition from one energy shell to another, they transition from one energy shell in the electron to another, and at that point a photon is given off, and that photon goes into your eyes, and that's how you see stuff, and that's how I see, that's how we all see stuff. Now, how do our eyes make sense of that? I've always been of the belief that because an antennae is about a quarter the size of a wave that it wants to correlate with, so this antenna is this big, because a wave double this size or quadruple this size is going past it and this antenna will pick it up. What that wave then does, traveling at the speed of light, it excites the, air, the electrons in the aerial, which then oscillate up and down and it creates uh, interference. And it's the same by when, the, when we, if I wanna throw up and down electrons up and down this aerial, I can then transmit waves and, and, and signals. So I thought because waves, EM waves correlate with the molecules at the same wavelength as the EM, I thought there'd be something in our eyes, which is four to 700 nanometers a lot, uh, across, like a, I don't know, like a, a photo pigment that our eyes then see because the EM waves of visible light would correlate with our eyes. So I thought, okay, let's say we had bigger pupils. We'd be able to see bigger wavelengths. Let's say we had smaller pupils. But alas, that's not true. I couldn't find one thing on Google Scholar that shows the correlation of visible light in four to 700 nanometers correlates with anything exactly the size of the cells in our eyes. However, the best description is, and this is simplified, when those photons that I just described before from electron transition hit your retina, which is about four millimeters wide, the retina, behind the retina, we have these things called photopigments, or photo, let's call them photoreceptors. In those receptors, they're made up of rods and cones. And within the rods and cones, we've got RGB, which makes, we can see three colors, we've got RGB. And within those, Rods and cones, there's a lot of things, but one of the main molecules are called chrome, chromophores or chromophores, however you want to say it. And those chromophores, they are pigments which contain lots of different things, but they're based on carbon. And the electrons in those carbon atoms, when they move from one energy shell to another, 
if the energy level of the photon that's hitting them is right, chromophores, they absorb the photons that you're seeing and that sends, an, sends the signal to your brain to say, right, let's see red, green or blue right now. Now, as I said, we just call red, green and blue, but they're wavelengths. We call, uh, okay, hopefully, I've not lost you. Now you understand, I hope, as of today's understanding, how photons reflect off of things, hit our eyes, and how we then see them, okay? Now, once we've, our, our brain ha has seen that, that's, that's the vision. Now you've got all these other different types of rays, whether I said they're X-rays, gamma rays. Again, the way that they travel is exactly the same as visible light. Now for a second, think about the mantis shrimp. The mantis shrimp has 14 photoreceptors. Could you even imagine what this mantis shrimp can see? Moths, I think, have 12. Birds have, no, not birds, butterflies, I think, have 12. So they can see a huge array more than we can. So I would love to know, what would it look like? Could we uh, augment ourselves to see UV, IR? We can always look at heat maps and you can, there's, there's certain apps that you can see. There's, there's actually a Nikon camera that allows you to take pictures in UV. Now, there's a reason why we can't see in UV, because UV is damaging to the body. It can ionize, uh, as you know, from skin cancer, and there's cells on our eyes that protect the UV from coming through. But imagine if we could see UV. Now, a very popular picture is to see the skin damage. And it's very weird that skin damage is caused by UV, but if you could see in UV, you could see the skin damage. They're two completely different things, like a, a in and an out. But actually, you'd be able to see UV damage, you'd be able to see contours on, on a ski slope, you'd be able to pick up things a lot better in terms of contours, you'd be able to see how well sunscreen is applied. That's with UV. With infrared, um, the way that Herschel discovered below red was that he got a prism like this, and once the light came through and split, as you've all seen prism splitting light into different colours before, he put a thermometer along each colour and he put a thermometer just below red, and he saw that there was a temperature below red, which is now called infrared, which again, we can use for many different things. So I just wanted to like, you know, touch on the fact that I believe we augment ourselves to see all of these different EM parts of the spectrum. Obviously we use telescopes um, to see radio telescopes, to see radio waves and to pick up things, but I'd love it if we could see it ourselves. And my thoughts are this, if you could see the entire EM spectrum, you would be able to, for example, if you could jump between different categories of size, for example, if you could see radio waves, I would look like a silhouette. Because the waves are pretty long, from 20 centimetres up to a kilometre, a lot of them would just bounce around me. Not all of them would reach me and they'd, they'd bend around me. So I would look like a silhouette. And if you go all the way up to gamma rays, I'm sure I would look very, very, very bright and it'd be very hard to see. But the key to remember is that if we were to think about having X-ray vision, you th I think if I had X-ray vision right now, I'd be able to see through my arm. Well, actually I wouldn't unless I emitted an X-ray. So there are hardly any X-rays in this room right now. If I went to a hospital and somebody turned on an X-ray machine, I'd be able to see their bones. But unless I emitted X-rays, which are ionizing and dangerous, then I can't see X-rays. So it, you've got to think most things on this I've got to think most things on this planet are actually visible light rays. That's the majority of rays. And that's why we've probably evolved just to be able to see visible light. But if we could see everything, first of all, you'd want to, in the same way your eyes dilate in dark and light, your eyes would want to dilate and see different EM parts of the spectrum. But it'd also very, be very cool to see all of the EM spectrum. You'd be able to see, for example, see through walls. And when I look to my bones, because I can also see visible light as well as X-rays, I'd probably be able to see my bones in color. They're, it's almost unimaginable but the core thing I've realized is that you won't just look around and see, you know, um, plumes emitting from Wi-Fi routers because those waves are the same waves as visible light. What you would see if you could see radio waves on the lower end of the spectrum, when you look at a Wi-Fi router, you would see the Wi-Fi router, the reflection of the Wi-Fi router be a lot brighter because it's emitting Wi-Fi 5.4 gigahertz or whatever. And because they're a lot stronger around the source, and as you know, they emit in a spherical pattern, we would be able to look around and see where routers are um, and where other things that emit. So like I say, you wouldn't see a plume of cloud emitting how a lot of people say with these Wi-Fi routers. Just when you look 
Spotify route. So it would be, you would notice the difference in, in, I guess humans would call it color, but whatever, you'd look at it and it would appear different to you. So last thing I really wanted to touch on in terms of trying to give you an understanding of like, I think if I mention all of this, you'll get a good understanding of how the world would look if we could see the entire EM spectrum. And I'm just fascinated that the world works, whether it's drones, whether it's anti-drones, uh, whether it's covert communication, whether it's uh, electrotactic radio therapy, sorry, radiotactic cancer therapy for brain tumors. All of this stuff is EM. I think they use cobalt-60 for the, which has got a half-life of five years. And they use cobalt-60 to emit, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to go too much into that. What I really want to say is a few more things on how mad EM is. Okay, every single atom gives off electromagnetic radiation. So um, every atom around you right now, even if it's not just giving off light that you can see, it's giving off, as long as the electrons are excited, it's giving off radiation. So it's within the realms of physics to think that everything is giving off information and that information is then being absorbed and saved somewhere. So there's no reason why you couldn't pick up a table and look at the table and look back in at all the light that's ever hit it and be able to almost, not reverse time, but look at the light of the previous amounts of time. So everything around is giving off this and we can pick it up. So if you have every telescope that picks up radio waves, which are basically photons, let's call them photons. If you add every single photon that has hit every single telescope around the world since the beginning of time, the entire power of all of those photons hitting every telescope around the world is less than one watt. That's how insane our telescopes are. Uh, in 1977, I think SETI received a wow signal for 72 seconds. It was the 21 centimeter line, which is famous in astronomy. It's hydrogen. It's what astronomers think if there was extraterrestrial life, they would be sending signals at 21 centimeters, which is the wavelength. And we received that. And it's still probably our best evidence to date that there may be extraterrestrials. The OMG particle, a gamma ray hit Earth that was so powerful, a single photon is ton had tons and tons of pressure of, of energy. Uh, just imagine we could harness those gamma rays behind a rocket. You know, the, 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 it goes on and on and on. And I think EM is probably one of the most fascinating things to study. I've studied Maxwell's four equations and I'm studying in my physics now, but I think it's very good to have a, try and have a visual understanding of how the world would look if we could actually see EM. Now, I bought this amazing spectrum analyzer, which will look at all of the spectrum around me from zero to 12 gigahertz a second. And it's like the noise on the TV. I used to look at the white noise on the TV. All of this is uh, being seen right now by this aerial. So it's the EM waves are resonating, they're interfering with the aerial, they're throwing electrons up and down, and it's reading the waves. I can pick up my car key signals, I can pick up phone signals on this. So it's just a, a matter of how deep we can go until we can actually say, all right, I want to see infrared, I can see infrared, or I can pick up radio waves on my citizens band radio. Um, I think that is it. Um, I hope I haven't lost you. I thought of loads of ways of doing this video. You know people do YouTube videos and they... You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. Well, I, you know, there's loads of ways, loads of cool pictures and videos and make it really YouTube-y and try and get loads of views. But as you can see, I don't get many views. I really want to just explain how the world might look if you could see the entire EM spectrum and how fascinating it is that something that's invisible that we can program so well exists around us everywhere. And I think there's a lot of opportunities with it. Thank you. Oh, let us know if there's any other videos you'd like me to make on this subject.